it's time to reveal my special guest. But before we do that, I want to know whether you have a console classic or a console Capri. Please let us know. Send us your pictures. Leave a comment in the link below. That would be amazing. And also join in with our blog, which is www.downtthebarns.uk. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and become part of our classic car community. OK, it's time for you to introduce you my guest, which is BBC Radio 2 broadcaster, Bobby Pryor. Hey. Hi, Bobby. Hello. Welcome to Down at the Barns. And welcome to my car. Yeah, it's great seeing you again. It's been a little bit of a while. We've known each other many years. We first met in the 1990s, early 1990s, yeah. on Invicta FM. Yeah. Um, and back then you had two console Capris, a blue and a red one. Yeah, I so did. What's your love of this car? Oh, I have to confess, it comes down to the way it looks. Right. It's so cool, that line, that I love the pillarless line, I love the fins. And what it came from was the film American Graffiti. Um, I was a rockabilly girl anyway, and in that film was a Chevy Impala. And I love the Chevy Impala amongst all the American cars, and even all the British 50s cars, I just loved it. Went to Bromley Pageant at some time later, and there I saw my first console Capri. And I remember looking at it and thinking, that's a baby Chevy Impala. That's what I thought it was. It was kind of some connection because it looked like an American car. And I just fell in love. And I did the ridiculous thing of deciding that a classic car would be a good daily. So I bought my first one from Luton, drove it down the motorway. I could see the motorway underneath the floor. Uh, I had some work on it and used it as my daily. And then I got my red one, which was a modified one. And it had an RS2000 under the bonnet. Went very fast, didn't stop very fast. So I had to spend a lot of money on the brakes and things like that. Lost the heater. And um, I loved both of them. But it's mostly because of the look. When they drive away... They just look the coolest. They do indeed. Mm. Now let's bring ourselves forward now to mm. this sort of mid 2000s and this one becomes part of your life. Tell us how you found this car. Well, I always wanted another one because, you know, life changes and you have to be sensible sometimes. So I, the other two went and I always went to the Practical Classics restoration show at the NEC and always went round to the console Capri and Classic stand looking at the cars. And one year, I think it was 2017, I think I went, March, and this car was on a spit, just the bodywork, on a spin. And I stood and looked at it and I just went, oh, God, I still love those cars. And this very tall man came up to me and he went, that's a Capri. And I went, oh, I know, I, I have to. And he said, so you had to, why don't you have them now? And I explained, you know, life is complicated. And um, he said, you've got to get another. And I went, yeah, it's just that I don't live anywhere to keep them and they take work and, you know, every excuse you can think of not to have one. And um, he said, you've got to get one. And it was a lovely chat. And that guy's name was Rob King, about six foot 10, huge, lovely, friendly guy. And the club were all friendly. And so I spent some time with them. Yeah. So you went back though a year later, expecting it to be maybe finished. But you found something else, didn't you? Yeah, so I went back to the club and I expected to see the car, like I said, on the stand. And it wasn't. And in that year, something had really changed for him. So the car wasn't there. Uh, unfortunately, he had had a diagnosis, uh, a life-shortening diagnosis. So his plans for life for his new GT that he'd bought to rebuild. And this Capri, standard Capri, was suddenly thrown in the air. So he sold his GT and then the club rebuilt this standard Capri for him um, to pass on to somebody else. And it's a really sad story, but one thing that Rob did is he kept passing on the message. We emailed each other and we spoke on the phone sometimes saying, look, life is short. Live your dreams. If you want the car, it's yours. So I just said yes. I just went, actually, you're right. I'm going to do this. Somehow I'm going to do this. Um, and it's one of the little other little sad things is uh, my dad became ill at the, exactly the same time. So I lost my dad. But by losing my dad, uh, what it did is it gave me the funds and I bought Rob's car and carried on the momentum of that. So we've lost Rob now, sadly. But I always think I take care of Rob's car. And it was built by Mario and the club. They put it all together for us. So there's a lot of love gone in this car. So I always think I'm just driving around this lovely machine that the club and Rob gave to me to make sure that I did have another Capri.
you've come to a point in your life where you've got these two big interests. You've got the classic cars and you've got the travelling. Yeah. And you've decided that the travelling is probably more of what you want to get into. So what that means is something's got to give. So unfortunately, you're thinking about maybe passing this car on to maybe someone else who would be interested. What, tell us about that. Well, it's difficult because emotionally I'm so attached to this and it's Rob's and I really want to take care of it. But if the right home became available because i think we all just custodians of these cars so it's not as much as selling it as rehoming it obviously i've got to sell it to rehome yeah, it yeah but yeah i think now i've got to the stage where also i'm quite frightened to drive it not because i'm frightened of driving it but because it's brand new and it's absolutely so perfect yeah it is there's a part of me that wants to keep it that way and if you want to do that then you really need your own storage and your own place to kind of take care of it properly and I don't have that and I can't see that happening because I want to travel so much so I think now is the time that I might be home having said that I did say that two years ago <laughs> so let's see but yes so the right person so yeah so let's talk about the interior it's got great interior hasn't it what do you like about it uh because it's like a 50s diner exactly what you said is <laughs> the rockabilly girl in me is still there i yeah. still love everything 50s and yeah. it's red the piping's all there it's original as well mm. it's survived really well it's come up beautiful and i love the kind of creamy white because it's ermine white not bright white and yeah. it really matches with the red and it's just beautiful all the details the bench seat is quite narrow but i do remember in my first ones i could get my brothers and sisters along the yeah. on the back because they weren't too tall so yeah. that was well the boot is huge yes yeah, i mean they're boot. known for it i mean you can get four people in the boot yeah you shouldn't but you know. <laughs> don't get four people in the boot no. tell us about the steering wheel well the steering wheel is fantastic oh, i think it's, it's the great. best thing i mean the size of it is huge i kind of i mean it doesn't have power steering yeah. so i kind of have to wrap myself around it to get around corners uh it's you, got you the, mentioned the jetsons earlier well it's it true. reminds me of the jetsons so i don't know if one of their cars <laughs> and the five stars on the steering wheel yeah. that match the five stars on the front of the car yeah. which i love which is great uh, handbrake is under here dash yep. it's got a lovely choke which of course everyone loves a choke yeah what it does have and it shouldn't have is because it's it's not a gt but mm. it has the gt dials yeah that's the, it has the bonus even though it's a standard so that's you've got good. the rev counter and the oil pressure there it says about this button on the floor so actually well the funny thing about the button on the floor is when i got to drive in this again because i hadn't driven one for a few years i just remember thinking where's the full beam yeah and that's the full beam button yeah, yeah and it took me ages to find it um also i can only just reach the pedals even with the seat really far forward i have to have a bolster seat so i've got yeah. the shortest legs um and the seat right the way forward yeah it's simple i mean it's got a parcel shelf right the way under yeah um and it's just i don't know it's simplicity the radio in there doesn't work but it looks good, good. yeah that's what so we won't get any traffic reports after all well, we don't go where the traffic is. <laughs> That's true. Um, the other thing I want to say about this yeah. car, because it's not water-cooled, it has the special coolant, so it's less likely to overheat. So it's um, that's really worked well for this engine as well. So I love that addition to it. One of the things I like about the interior is these windows. They're great, aren't they? Well, if you look at the shape of them, yeah. that matches, the obviously, the Capri that most people know, the shape yeah. of this yes. and the two front lights. Yes. That's what the kind of carried forward. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but what the ma the magic is, Adam, is when you take them down because it's pillarless. So watch this. Mm, How cool is that? That is cool. Yeah, yeah and then you take this one, and then you've got that hole open. It's like a convertible. How cool is that? It's wonderful. <laughs> but tell you what, let's take this car for a spin, shall we? All right then. How far do you want to go? Should we go to the coast? Uh, yeah, let's go to Brighton. Let's do it.
It's been wonderful driving around today in this Consul Capri. So thank you ever so much, Bobby, for bringing it down. It's been okay. brilliant, you know. So if you're interested in purchasing this car, please get in touch with me and then we can pass your details on. But Bobby, over to you. Well, I was thinking, as the roads are so congested, you know, the M5's closed, the M25 QE2 bridge is closed, you can't get through the Blackwall Tunnel. If you drive over the Erskine Bridge, it's too windy for high-sided vehicles. So maybe just stay at home, tune in to Down at the Barns, and then while you're doing that, you can like, you can comment, and you can subscribe. She's good. Let's go.